Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve into The Da Vinci Curse by Leonardo Lo Spinato. This insightful work explores the tribulations faced by modern day polymaths, individuals who are exceptionally talented and interested in multiple fields, yet find themselves unable to fully commit to a singular path. With a pattern of constantly changing jobs, hobbies, and sometimes even homes, these individuals struggle to find deep engagement in the vast array of disciplines they find fascinating. In a society that often celebrates specialization, the Da Vinci curse brings to light the unique challenges that come with having a Renaissance-like spirit. The book offers a comprehensive analysis of the problem and provides a systematic approach to harness one's varied talents in a productive way. Whether you're someone who's perennially searching for your true calling among many interests, or find yourself incessantly starting new projects without seeing them to completion, this book is for you. Leonardo Lo Spinato, the author, embodies the very spirit he discusses. With a diverse background ranging from engineering to journalism and a career spanning from tech giants like eBay and IBM to crafting custom electric guitars as a luthier, his multifaceted experience lends credibility and depth to his writing. If you seek to conquer the restlessness of a curious mind and channel your numerous talents into fulfilling endeavors, join us as we explore how to break free from the Da Vinci Curse. The Da Vinci Curse, life designed for people with too many interests and talents. Introduction, unleashing the polymath within, how to thrive in a specialized world. Imagine a time when a person could dabble in a variety of disciplines and be celebrated for their wide ranging talents. Leonardo da Vinci was the epitome of such a universal genius seamlessly blending art and science to leave an indelible mark on history. Fast forward to today, and society seems to place little value on these modern-day polymaths, the Renaissance individuals, who struggle to fit into the narrow confines of specialty that the contemporary world demands. If you're someone who finds themselves itching to explore diverse fields, unable to tether themselves to a singular path, you might sense a certain kind of existential malaise the Da Vinci Curse. This mental tug of war between interests can leave one feeling unfocused and unfulfilled, seemingly cursed by an inability to specialize. But take heart. This narrative is not one of despair. We'll embark on a journey to understand this modern curse and, crucially, learn strategies to transform it into a blessing. Along the way, we'll delve into why the prospect of competing in specialized fields might quash the enthusiasm for dedication, how to pinpoint the pursuits that will help us rise above our jack-of-all-trades nature, and why it's essential to discern between hobbies and vocation. So, let the story unfold as we explore the paradoxes of the Da Vinci curse, and learn how to channel our inner Leonardo in a world that rarely pauses to appreciate a broad spectrum of passions. Let's uncover the keys to breaking free from the shackles of endless dabbling and steer ourselves towards a life as rich and multifaceted as the one led by Da Vinci himself. Part 1. Jack of all trades, master of none. The dilemmas of diverse talents. Take a moment to consider the vast expanse of human knowledge and how it has profoundly deepened since the days when Leonardo da Vinci sketched the sinews of the human body with a simple quill. Fast forward to today, and we have experts sharply focused on ever-narrowing fields. Each specialist is a crucial cog in the wheel of progress, diverging far from the broader pursuit of knowledge that characterized Renaissance thinkers. In the delicately complex dance of spinal surgery, for example, there's no room for a surgeon to be a violin virtuoso in the mornings and a gourmet chef by evening. The sobering truth is that mastering such an intricate discipline demands an unwavering commitment to a single craft. These days, the pursuit of excellence in one field often leaves little room for expertise elsewhere. This laser focus approach raises a real conundrum for those graced with a bounty of talents. 
For modern day da Vinci's, the siren call of their varied interests is a constant companion. Presented with a smorgasbord of intriguing possibilities, they ache to explore and master everyone. Yet they're also haunted by the ticking of the clock, the insidious fear that there just isn't enough time in a lifetime to embrace it all. Their curiosity knows no bounds, beckoning them into new realms with fiery enthusiasm, only for the charm to wane as soon as the basic tenets of the domain are conquered. The allure of the unfamiliar persists, pulling them away from the focused discipline mastery demands. Consider the tale of the author, for whom the enchanting world of classical music beckoned irresistibly. At eighteen, he clasped the violin, his heart set ablaze by the harmonious melodies of this newfound love. But alas, the romance was fleeting. A mere few months into his journey, the violin's allure faded like the final note of a symphony, and the quest for the next grand passion began. Such is the bittersweet dance for the gifted, whose multiple talents are both a blessing and a curse. Part 2 The Internal Struggle of the Multi-Talented Searching for Passion Amid the Fear of Competition Picture a compass spinning in perpetual motion never settling on a true north. This is the landscape of the multi-talented individual, or the da Vinci person, as they're often called. With a vast array of interests and skills, these modern-day polymaths drift from one passion to the next, unable to anchor themselves in any one direction for long. It's not because they lack the potential to excel, but rather there's an underlying fear that stifles their commitment the dread of competition. It's a strange paradox. We live in a world that often celebrates rivalry as a catalyst for achievement. Many people thrive on the challenge of competition, and it fuels their drive to push beyond what they thought was possible. Yet, for those blessed with many talents, competition casts a shadow rather than spurs ambition. They might dive headfirst into learning a new craft, only to retreat just as they begin achieving proficiency, enough to placate their ego into believing they could excel if they really tried. Consider the individual who picks up a basketball, only to put it down once they've scored their first three-pointer, enough to confidently say, I've got the knack for this. Rather than measuring their skill against others, they preserve their self-respect and abandon the activity before any real competition enters the arena. Hand in hand with this aversion to competition is the crushing weight of potential criticism. Da Vinci individuals are often unwilling to wade through the initial stages of being a novice with all the constructive criticism that entails. When the learning curve grows steep, their instinct isn't to persevere, but to jump ship to smoother waters. But the repercussions of this restlessness are far from benign. A life filled with superficial dabbles in many arts, but mastery in none, leads to a haunting sense of dissatisfaction. The constant switching of gears leaves them feeling like they've acquired breadth without depth, and it becomes even more poignant as middle age approaches. The ticking clock amplifies their despair, highlighting the unfocused journey and the elusive quest to find a true calling that could unify their plethora of talents. The challenge remains, How can they conquer their fear and discover a domain where they can truly flourish? Part 3. Finding Harmony in Complexity The Key to Satisfying a Da Vinci's Soul Do you find yourself lost in a sea of interests, unsure of how to navigate the waters of your multitudes? You're not alone. As a member of the illustrious Da Vinci tribe, the solution isn't to suppress your diverse talents but to unite them in an endeavor that's as multifaceted as you are. The crux of breaking free from the da Vinci curse lies in discovering an activity that can weave together several strands of your vast tapestry of abilities. Just like a complex personality craves intricate puzzles, your varied skills long for a challenge that demands their collective focus. Take the author's journey as inspiration. He, a consummate da Vinci person, roved through careers and hobbies, searching for that elusive spark. It was only when he turned to the art of crafting electric guitars and basses that he found his calling. 
This wasn't just a hobby. It was an intricate endeavor requiring a cocktail of knowledge, acoustics, physics, electrical engineering, design, and intertwined with his love for music and helping others find their creative voice. What about your narrative? How do you identify the endeavor that will still your restless spirit? The path to self-realization isn't shrouded in impenetrable mist. It's found in a systematic exploration of your talents and how they can converge into a single, satisfying pursuit. Prepare to chart your course, and together, we'll navigate the voyage towards uncovering your own multifaceted vocation. Part 4. Embark on a quest for your true calling with a wish list and discerning criteria. Owning the title of a modern-day da Vinci is notably overwhelming, but pinpointing your true calling needn't be a Herculean feat. It starts with the simple act of charting desires on a wish list, which sets the stage for pre-selection. This is where you map out all the pursuits that your heart yearns to accomplish, if you were bestowed with incalculable time and wealth. So, take a blank sheet, let your imagination run wild, and jot down every venture that stirs your soul. Dreaming of playing piano melodies that tug at heartstrings, yearning for the thrill of scuba diving in the cerulean waters of Thailand, perhaps ambitiously aiming for a degree in psychology? Don't shy away from the fantastical. Pop stardom and lunar adventures are as valid here as the more earthbound ambitions. With this tapestry of aspirations laid bare, you'll embark on the crucial exercise of preselection. Gauge each wish against a triad of critical questions. Does it bring you joy? Do you possess a natural flair for it? And does it have the potential to fill your coffers? Be uncompromising here. If a dream doesn't align with all three, it's not poised to satisfy the multifaceted yearnings of a da Vinci soul. Let hobbies remain hobbies and avoid pursuits that promise wealth but neglect passion or skill. By adhering to this strict set of criteria, you move significantly closer to unearthing your personal vocation. With the initial pre-selection out of the way, we proceed to sharpen our focus even further, distilling our expansive wish list to a few precious gems that resonate with our deepest, truest selves. Let's discover the next milestone on the path to finding our calling. Part 5. Sharpening Your Calling Through Systematic Assessment and the BCG matrix. With a list that already reflects the convergence of joy, talent, and earning potential, it's time to proceed with a more nuanced appraisal to sift through our chosen activities. This phase is where rationality meets passion. It's time to dissect our creative inventory with two key questions in mind. What's the potential for income, and to what extent will the activity bring fulfillment? For this meticulous analysis, we turn to a tool familiar in the realm of business, but equally potent for personal evaluation, the BCG Matrix. Originally crafted by the esteemed Boston Consulting Group for corporate use in deciding which products to fund, this strategic tool can be aptly adapted to our purpose. The BCG Matrix categories, cows, dogs, stars, and question marks, provide us the framework for guiding our choices. Cows represent the endeavors that promise a financial windfall, but barely move the needle on our satisfaction. Conversely, dogs are those that neither enrich our bank accounts nor our souls. They can be dismissed without a second thought. Our primary focus should zero in on the stars. These are the goldmine activities that not only have the potential to secure a prosperous future, but will also satiate our inner desire for purpose and passion. But don't be too hasty to discount the question marks. These are the undertakings we cherish, even if their profitability isn't immediately apparent. With creativity and persistence, these beloved activities could one day metamorphose into our shining stars, combining pleasure with prosperity. Now, having passed our prospects into cows, dogs, and stars, with special consideration for those promising question marks, it's time to gear up for the final stride towards uncovering our calling. Part 6. Navigating the pitfalls on the path to your calling with balance and resolve. Determining and evaluating our preferred pursuits is just the beginning. 
as we embark on the final leg of our journey to fulfilling our calling, we must remain vigilant against the snares that could derail our progress. Here's how we can fortify our resolve and stave off four familiar foes, fear, procrastination, creative blocks, and unchecked narcissism. Treading the tightrope of fear is our first test. A dash of fear is a signpost that we're on the path of ambition. It's the flicker in our chest that whispers, this matters. Yet if the flame of fear roars into an inferno, it's a signal to recalibrate our plans until fear is a motivator, not a paralyzer, finding that perfectly poised sweet spot. Then, we must grapple with the ever-lurking shadow of procrastination. It's the thief of time, snatching away precious moments we could use to bring our dreams to life. Occasional rest is one thing, but habitual idleness is a luxury we can't afford. The third hurdle is overcoming creative blocks, the droughts of inspiration that leave us feeling barren and lost. These aren't born from sloth, but from disconnection. When the well of creativity runs dry, it's time to reacquaint ourselves with the passions that fueled our journey, reigniting the spark that guides our creation. Lastly, we must tend to our narcissism with care. A smidgen grants us the confidence to chase grand visions. Too much, however, sends us spiraling into cycles of overconfidence and disillusionment. When we become enamored with our own potential, we tempt mania. But the fall from such heights can be steep, plunging us into a pit of despair when reality fails to match our lofty dreams. Equipped with the awareness of these obstacles, we stride forward, our eyes wide open. It's a trek that demands vigilance, pacing, and an unwavering commitment to the nuanced dance of self-awareness. With these guardians in place, we're ready to turn the final page on the Da Vinci curse and step into the bright chapter of our calling. Final summary. In a world that lionizes specialists, the Da Vinci person, rich in talents yet restless in spirit, struggles to find their niche. It's a perpetual dance of discovery, where unbridled curiosity leads to a trail of half-explored paths, leaving da Vinci individuals feeling unanchored and incomplete. But herein lies a promising resolution. By embracing their multifaceted strengths and channeling them into a complex, fulfilling, and lucrative pursuit, they can find tranquility and purpose. The key is to weave one's myriad talents into a single, coherent tapestry through a strategic approach that includes candid self-evaluation, prioritization, and the astute management of fear and ambition. The da Vinci person can forge a unique and satisfying path by recognizing and overcoming the inherent challenges of creative blocks, procrastination, and the delicate balance of ego they can transform their curse into an extraordinary gift. In conclusion, the Da Vinci curse doesn't need to be an affliction. It can, in fact, become a remarkable advantage. For those who feel they are too scattered, too interested in everything to ever really succeed at anything, there's hope. With the right structure, introspection, and strategy, the Da Vinci person's curse can be lifted, opening the door to a world where they don't just fit in. They thrive. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five star rating and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.